At synapses, ions move across cell membranes through chemically gated channels. The gates are opened or closed by neurotransmitters. Your goals for learning are to review the types of ion channels, to learn how chemically gated channels produce excitatory and inhibitory synaptic potentials, to understand that neurotransmitters may act directly, causing rapid postsynaptic potentials, or indirectly, causing slow postsynaptic potentials. Here's what you need to know. What an electrochemical gradient is, what receptors are, and how they are activated by biochemical messengers, the definition of depolarize, hyperpolarize, threshold, neurotransmitter, enzyme, and phosphorylation. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. Ion channels are regionally located in the neuron and are functionally unique. Click each type of channel to see its location and function. Non-gated channels are located in the cell membranes on the dendrites, the cell body, and the axon. Non-gated channels are responsible for establishing the resting membrane potential. Most chemically gated channels are located on the dendrites and the cell body. Chemically gated channels are responsible for producing synaptic potentials. Synaptic potentials will be studied in the last section of this module. Most voltage-gated channels are found on the axon hillock all along unmyelinated axons and at the nodes of Ranvier in myelinated axons. Voltage-gated channels are responsible for generation and propagation of the action potential. This topic was studied in the module Nervous System Action Potential. Many receptors are physically part of an ion channel. Binding neurotransmitter to a receptor on the postsynaptic cell causes a change in the shape of the receptor. This can open or in some cases close the ion channel. Drag acetylcholine to its receptor to see how it works. Neurotransmitters that bind to ion channels are said to act directly. They cause a brief, rapid change in the membrane potential of the postsynaptic cell. Directly acting neurotransmitters include acetylcholine, glutamate, GABA, and glycine. Drag GABA to its receptor. We have shown only a single molecule of neurotransmitter binding to each channel. Ion channels typically have multiple binding sites for neurotransmitters and require the binding of more than one neurotransmitter molecule to open or close the channel. Ion channels at a typical excitatory synapse are specific for cations, having a watery pore large enough to pass both sodium and potassium. In a resting neuron, the electrochemical gradient for sodium is very large and causes sodium to move into the cell. The electrochemical gradient for potassium causes it to move out of the cell, but the gradient is very small. Click the neuronal membrane to see the arrows representing the magnitude and direction of each of these gradients. Click the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to see it excite the neuron. Notice that more sodium moves into the cell than potassium moves out.
Excitatory postsynaptic potentials depolarize neurons. If the neuron is depolarized to threshold, an action potential is generated. An inhibitory postsynaptic potential, or IPSP, is produced when the movement of ions makes the inside of the cell more negative. Ion channels at a typical inhibitory synapse are specific for chloride, and the electrochemical gradient for chloride causes it to move into the cell. Click the neurotransmitter GABA to see it inhibit the neuron. Inhibitory postsynaptic potentials hyperpolarize neurons, making the membrane potential more negative. Inhibitory postsynaptic potentials oppose excitability in the neuron and tend to prevent the neuron from generating an action potential. Some neurotransmitters bind to receptors that are separate from ion channels. This process most often leads to production of intracellular second messengers, which ultimately alter ion channels. Such neurotransmitters are said to act indirectly. Drag the neurotransmitter norepinephrine to the binding site on the receptor to observe its indirect action. The receptor is coupled to the ion channel by a G protein. At rest, Guanosine diphosphate, or GDP, is bound to the G protein. When norepinephrine binds to the receptor, the G protein is activated, releases GDP, and binds guanosine triphosphate, or GTP. GTP is a high-energy molecule. Part of the activated G protein travels along the membrane and activates an enzyme, which induces production of a second messenger. The neurotransmitter is the first messenger. The second messenger activates an intracellular enzyme, which phosphorylates a potassium ion channel and closes it. In the resting neuron, movement of potassium out of the cell acts to hyperpolarize the cell. Closing these channels results in the membrane potential becoming less negative and depolarizing the cell. Depolarization of the cell by the indirect method is time-consuming. The resulting synaptic potential is slow in onset and long in duration. Besides excitation, indirectly acting neurotransmitters can also produce slow inhibition. The neurotransmitters acetylcholine, glutamate, GABA, and serotonin can act indirectly as well as directly, depending on the receptor to which they bind. The catecholamines, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine, and peptide neurotransmitters only act indirectly. Drag the norepinephrine to the receptor to see the whole chain of events. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Neurotransmitters that bind directly to chemically gated channels produce rapid synaptic potentials which may excite or inhibit the neuron. Ion channels responsible for rapid excitatory postsynaptic potentials permit both sodium and potassium to pass through them. Ion channels responsible for rapid inhibitory postsynaptic potentials typically permit chloride to pass through. Neurotransmitters that act indirectly 
produce slow postsynaptic potentials, which modulate the activity of neurons. To access cross-references for this topic in your Benjamin Cummings textbook, click here. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.